I have one day to make a video for Christmas. Oh, my cross did, that was meant to be. Ah! Take out my frustration by stealing Christmas in miniature form and taking it to the top of miniature Mount Crumpet to dump it. This is Mount Crumpet. So these are my references. This is my board. This is my phone. This is my hot knife. I have one day and I'm gonna be using dangerous tools to make this happen as fast as possible. Nothing could possibly go wrong. This is my baseboard size and the peak of the mountain will be the tallest but thinnest. So with all of these four foam boards stuck together, I'm gonna have Mount Crumpet rise and let's curl it over. Yeah, how does that feel? Does that feel crumpety? My Christmassy video, like it or lump it, is all about making a Christmas Mount Crumpet. Grinchmas is a time when we punish the merry and pay homage to Seuss in the film with Jim Carrey. Let's start with the base of our Grinchula home, which I cut from the foamiest, fluffiest foam. There was no time to dabble, it was time to get diving. I heated my knife and got super hot kniving. I slashed and I sliced till my Mount Crumpet peak was as curly and curved as a cluckatoo's beak. But how will you know when I'm done? Well, perhaps we can play it all back in this nice, smooth time lapse. All right, I'm feeling pretty bloody good about how this is looking. In fact, I'm feeling the spirit of Grinchmas. And I'd like to share that with people in the studio. And we all know that the best way to spread Grinchmas dreariness is Mariah Carey for all to hear. <laughs> oh, thank God. My Bluetooth. I am genuinely really excited about this. It's a rust job. I have a day. I should have done something far less ambitious, but I'm an idiot. Next, I'm gonna use Sculpt Mold to give it a surface texture. It's almost gonna be finished after the next step, especially because we have pre-prepared some Grinchy Christmas trees. These are very Seussian, I guess you could say. We've stylized them. Dave has helped by skewing them in Blender. Murray has helped by 3D printing them, as well as lovely little Hoovian houses. Those trees, those trees, those resin print trees. All my life I've been searching for trees such as these. All the houses and trees could be painted with ease. I just had to set them all down on a tray. Then I spray and I spray and I spray, 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 until all of the boring old grey's gone away. Now, while that dries, we're gonna get this ready to make some magic. Starting off with, ooh, these are saved from the last massive board I did, which happened to be Mordor. So these are sort of like a charcoal-y gray plaster mold, which is kind of perfect because you can actually see quite a lot of darkness of the rocks underneath. So while there is snow on top, you can also really see the earth. We've got snow covered ground all the way down on the flat bottoms, but as the mountain is rising, we can sort of see the sides of the mountain. So I need to account for that. But in these next few steps, we're gonna start adding a bit of texture, a bit of color, a bit of magic, a bit of Grinchmas magic. For a mountain to look like it's real and not phony, it needs to look rocky and craggy and stony. Sticking on rocks can be plenty of fun. I smash them with hammers and stick them with gum. Okay, last but certainly not last. I'm gonna mix up two loads of plaster cut, but master cut, but I always forget what it's called. Oh, what? Cast, pass, plaster, no. Sculpt mold. We're going to be working with sculpt mold. So let's glove up because we're going to be working with uh, two different colors and we don't want to get too mishmashy intermingled between them. So these require really careful, accurate measurements to get right. And roughly whatever it is we have of this, we'll just sort of, you know, really accurately guess how much goes in which one. So one of these 
I'm gonna add some white paint. And gesso is white and it's paint, paintish. In It's sort of paint. It's basically paint, right? It's not gonna be crisp white snow, but we can put that on top. This is just the foundation. Then we color this with some color oxide pigments. So this is blanketed in beautiful snow. The top of Mount Crumpet is a beautiful powdery snowy surface. Now we move on to the darker texture, color, thing, stuff. This is basically a tutorial. I feel like Martha Stewart if she baked with shit. Am I stuck? I'm not stuck. I need muck, 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 muck. Once I've splashed on some muck and the hills look more hilly, I can pour on some grass and make Whoville, Whovilly. So, we're getting there. This is looking pretty cool, pretty Mount Crumpety. In a minute, I'll bring over my uh, base painted bits to put around, but before I do that, I need to do a little more terraining because snow falls onto things. So even though it's gonna be quite covered up, we're going to sprinkle down some green in the valley. Not a lot, just a bit. <clears throat> just give it a little bit of plant life. So Whoville can be happy and green before they wake up and find their Christmas has been completely ruined. It's nice to tell a story, you know? I missed a spot. It's a reference. <laughs> it's so funny like how little I did and how much that affected. That's why I love like doing terrain projects like this. It's chaotic, but it looks really cool and really quick. And the floors add the detail and the charm. Speaking of detail and charm, follow me. We have these charming little Susian props. So now is the time to start placing these trees all around the valley and up towards the mountain. They'll get scanter and scarcer as we go up. And we have these lovely little colorful bases for Whoville houses. I'm gonna recolor the roofs and once snow goes over everything, including the trees, it'll all blend together. But having that little pop of color and detail, so I can sort of alternate and really get a fun Susian vibe, I reckon this is gonna look really cool, really quick. Okay, here we have Mount Crumpet. How weird is it that, because I haven't put the proper snow down yet, we have an idea as to what it looks like when it's not Christmas in Whoville. This is summer in Whoville, which is pretty trippy. I have to prepare for Christmas though. So I've saved two trees that will act as Christmas trees because they are gonna be stolen by the Grinch, but I need a Grinch to bring all the scene together. So this all has to dry over a couple of days. I know I said I have a day to do this. I only have like just over half a day to do this. And then the rest of the day will be painting my Grinch and putting it all together. This mount is no crumpet with no mini Grinch. So here's one, approximate length, say an inch. Now the Grinch isn't simply a bad guy in books. He's also well known for his beautiful looks. He's a guy with whom you'd all love to be acquainted. So this model must now be perfected and painted. Look at him. He's a model, all right. His heart, strong jawline, great forearms, cute nose, just the lot. The whole package, charisma, looks, and his smart. Everyone knows he's a real work of art. Time spent in his presence is something to treasure and his hands are so hairy they make painting a pleasure so easy relaxing and fun no mistakes the Grinch is an artist he's got what it takes he's a natural talent barely even tries especially not when he's painting the eyes His faithful companion to rest at his side Max little Grinch dog along for the ride So 
I finally have my Grinch, my sleigh, and my Max, teeny, teeny, weeny. There's only one thing left to do, and that is steal Christmas. So I am gonna get some foam clay. Oh, see, I can be. Oh, you know Jim Carrey's not gonna be in movies anymore. I can basically. Oh, this is an opening. This is an audition. What if Universal Pictures sees this and they think, oh, who do we get? Who do we get to play the next Grinch? You know, and then they can watch this and be like, oh, here he, there he is. He's got all the mannerisms. I can do the smile. And then I have brown foam clay. <laughs> Was it too not grinchy enough? The great thing about this stuff is it just air dries and it's really good quality. Oh no, oh I've got a little, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna need to wear gloves for this. <laughs> a thing that I know that you know. That special last something. That grinch messy glow. It's snow. Watch it flow. It sprinkles and sinks to the township blow. Wherever there's grinch mess, the snow has to go because that is the way that the Grinch likes it. Just so. Quiet and shiny and sparkly and so absolutely covered head to toe with Grinchmas snow. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> It was me all along. It wasn't even, it was, there was no grinchiness here. All this was, was a little Christmas present from me to you. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little bit of a project. I really didn't have much time at the end of the year, but I wanted to do something really fun and really big with the time that I had. As so a thank you for watching our content this year and I hope you really enjoyed it. I'm gonna take a bit of a break for a couple of weeks. So in the meantime, I hope you have a really happy holiday, really happy new year. I know this, I know snowy is the picture of Christmas, but it's like a 30 degree day here in Australia, which is, no, it's not like, yeah, this is, I'm, so, I'm I'm committed for the for the Christmas vibe and for you. I'm committed to you. Thank you so much for watching my content this year. I'm really looking forward to next year. There are big things coming. If you're looking for a little bit more Christmassy content to watch, we actually made a video over on Insert Art where Alicia and I made a Wednesday slash Adam's Family Christmas card, which was animated. So go check that out and subscribe. But otherwise, that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later. It's so hot. It's so hot.